Hello and welcome from Courage My Europe 2018 in Berlin. I'm here today with Andrea Serena from the University of Applied Science in Ingolstadt. Andreas, welcome to the conference. Welcome. And thank you so much for your time to participate in the interview. As a first start, just to get you know you a bit better, do you mind introducing yourself and tell us a bit more about your background? I'm a professor in, in Ingolstadt for three years now, uh, working in the field of human-machine interaction and virtual reality. So this is my uh, my background at the university. In terms of research, I have about 15 years experience in car domain, working on human-machine interfaces for the driver and recently also working in the field of automated driving. Uh, within my research group, which uh, is about 10 PhD students and postdocs, we address all the different topics of automated driving and human machine interaction in cars, including trust, acceptance, ethical issues, but also for sure user experience uh, and user centered design. Uh, problems. You've moderated a workshop or led a workshop yesterday together with your colleagues on boosting the experience in automated driving system by applying a human-centered design perspective. Mm -hmm. I'd like to find out a bit more about that. So what does user experience actually mean in the context of automated driving systems? We have organized this workshop to see, and this is really important for us as researchers as well, to see how industry is thinking about this topic. Um, and we heard already today some interesting talks uh, from Audi or from, from other OEMs and third-party supplier. They see nowadays um, also the importance to look at um, research, not only from the industry perspective or from the management and uh, and revenue perspective, but from the user perspective. And when what we see in the coming future is that brand experience has not so much to do with um, how the vehicle drives, how it behaves. It's more on the maybe mobility as a service aspect. So the user and the brand will come more close together. And uh, so they need some emotion uh, or some emotional attachment between the two. And this is what, what um, industry is now also approaching and this was basically the uh, the result of the workshop to, uh, yesterday we had a lot of industry people uh, in the workshop and interestingly we see that there's the same problems that have come up from industry as from research and we also see that we're discussing problems um, at least for automated driving and from from the user experience perspective since many years we still have the same problems, we still have no solutions. Mm -hmm. So there's always that discussion about how to implement concepts that gives back the time to the user, to spend the time in the car um, wherever you like um, and however you like and doing whatever you like. But there is no solution so far. And the problem might be that we are talking about level 5 automation but uh, we are not able to implement level 5 automation before having implemented level 3 and level 4. Mm. So the technical problems that we solve today are for level 3 and the concepts that we develop are for level 5. And here this gap is the big, the big problem because we, we cannot implement the solutions or the, the visions that we have for level 5 in level 3. So level 5 means sleeping, level 5 means relaxing, reading a book but will not be possible in level three, level four. Same as for opening uh, the potential user group to the elderly and maybe also to kids that can now be drive with this type of car, will not be possible for level three and level four. We need a driving license. We need the ability to drive the car, to take over the car. So there is this, this big gap in in the concepts and the visions we develop and the actual implementation. What do you think has to be done and or what are the biggest challenges that have to overcome in order to overcome that gap overall? The biggest challenge uh, is that the, the car companies, so the manufacturers that actually implement the systems and build the systems, they need to accept the user as an important criteria in the development process. Mm -hmm. So it's not only on developing technology, making technology safe, um, making it secure and, uh, and accepted for the user. It's really the emotional aspect of the user, the emotional attachment. They need to include the user in the development process and not uh, in the very end. So marketing studies are important instruments 
to see where it, where the direction goes. But it's always the user that needs to be uh, involved and for sure the user is very individual. And this individualism will even increase in the future. So each and every user has some specific requirements. How the car is driving, how it's behaving, if it's moving fast or slow, is it, if it's um, um, overtaking behavior is aggressive or not. So bringing this finally back to the car is something that is not happening today. We are building one car for millions of people. There is no there's maybe a configuration possibility in the color of the interface. Uh, and you can configure when you, when you order the car, like do you like brown leather or black leather or white leather or do you like carbon surface or uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is, not, this is not enough. The implementation or the, the configuration um, needs to be really on the on system level and dynamic level and behavior level. You just mentioned that it's really important to always involve the user or the potential driver. And how does user experience actually relate to other psychological aspects such as trust and acceptance? How can that be increased? This is something that we see nowadays when we, uh, when we look at press announcements. So there is one accident from Uber, mm -hmm. there's one accident from Tesla and the whole world is looking towards this accident. But on the other side, every day thousands of people are killed in normal traffic accidents and nobody is talking about it. So there is this, uh, this huge um, yeah, misdirection maybe also in, the, in, in how um, these accidents are placed in press and, and how these are received then by the users. So the problem is maybe that a few single accidents, they fully... Uh, result in a mistrust of systems and the regain of trust is something that takes very long so you have some initial trust um, but this is this is uh, immediately destroyed if you hear from such an accident and the problem is and I really see this a problem for the implementation of automated driving if people have fear that the systems are not working properly or that they have no chance to get control back or to feel uh, that they have the system under control, then people might avoid using the systems. Mm -hmm. So nobody will buy it, how to then finally bring it to the market and make sure that, that users are using it. And there is, I think there is no way to force it yeah. from a governmental side, maybe you have to use the systems. Did you also discuss that topic of um, trust and acceptance in the workshop yesterday? And if yes, what were the outcomes? What were the insights you got? We looked a little bit in this direction, trust mm -hmm. and acceptance, uh, because this is some underlying concept um, going into user experience. The answers or the results from the workshop is, uh, as I said already, as humans, we have free will and free choice, and this cannot be overruled. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other side, we have the problem that there is level 3, 4, 5 automation. People might also have a different understanding what automation means because traditionally, um, so for the normal user, there is only manual driving and automated driving. There's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. They don't know all the automation levels. They don't know the problems at the different levels. So what we need to do, and um, here we all of us are challenged, uh, industry, research um, and, and uh, policy makers that we show and bring to the, to the society um, the different aspects, uh, show them where automation will work, uh, also tell them where it cannot work and how it cannot work um, so that we get trust and acceptance to the people uh, on a very fine grained and, and level underneath so that they understand then maybe when they read press reports what happened, why it happened and why this might not have an impact on their usage behavior or on their usage of this technology later. If you were to um, look at the future and there's been such a boom in technology in the automotive industry in the past years, if you were to say or potentially say what the um, what our roads look like in 20 years, what would you think that would be? This is not very, very easy to answer because uh, it can happen that uh, someday we will give up on, on the idea of having automated driving because of these problems mm -hmm. that people don't accept it. On the other hand, we have all these 
mega cities where it's already today almost impossible to have a traffic flow. So here they can go in the direction car sharing and, and multimodal transport. So we don't own a own car, we call it on demand. Uh, so much more relaxed traffic in the city, no own car, maybe combined with some uh, drone taxis and things like that. So have the multi-model uh, and, and multi-mobility experience. Um, everything in between can happen. And for sure, I hope that also individual mobility based on walking and riding a bike or maybe an e-bike. So there's a lot of opportunities. And I think for the end customer, uh, it's really important to have a, uh, to have a smooth handover between mm -hmm. all the different forms of mobility. It will not be pure driving a car, pure riding a bike or um, sitting in a tram. It is a combination of all of those. Yeah. Um, and this is what I personally think that we will see in the future. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Much appreciated. You're welcome. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.